Good afternoon and welcome. I'm Dr. Shanine Peet. I'm the executive lead for indigenization here at the University of Regina. I'm also an associate professor here in the Faculty of Education. In my role as executive lead, I enact the vision of the indigenous faculty and staff who are members of the Aboriginal Advisory Circle. They work together to define the priorities for indigenization that are implemented here at the university. And one of their key priorities this past year was to increase the frequency and visibility of sessions, events, and activities by indigenous scholars about indigenous themes and, and uh, ideas and to increase the presence here on campus of those ideas and of those scholars. In keeping with that theme, uh, we are beginning this school term with a presentation by two colleagues. And um, I want to introduce Dr. Chris Anderson and Dr. Rob Innes. Chris is from University of Alberta, and he's currently on sabbatical, and he's doing some work with Métis peoples in his family and community in the northern part of our province. And Dr. Rob Innes is also um, an Indigenous scholar in Native Studies at the University of Saskatchewan. Uh, he's originally from Kauzas, where my family are from. And uh, I've had a wonderful day visiting with these folks. Uh, we've got to know each other, and they know many of you here. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to the presentations that they'll be doing with us today. And I will turn it over to them. Uh, they both have about half an hour each to speak. And then we'd like to engage with you in some questions and some discussions until just before 3 o'clock. So I want to thank you for coming in. And I want to thank you for joining us um, here today. And I understand that if you have to slip out, we we'll just ask that you do so as quietly as possible um, before the 3 o'clock mark. So thank you for coming, and I'll turn it over to our guests today. So if you can join me in, in thanking them for being here. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to uh, begin by acknowledging the being on the Treaty 4 Métis territory, homelands. And it's good to be uh, in the territory. I am a member of Kaos' First Nation. Uh, although myself, I grew up in Winnipeg. That's where I grew up. Uh, my family uh, were Palches and Wapamoose and, and uh, Lavallis. Those are my family members from, uh, from Kalasas. Uh, I'm going to talk today a little bit about my, my book. This is the, the book that I did my, this is what my uh, PhD research, this was my PhD research. Uh, I was looking at uh, contemporary how, uh, temporary, contemporary kinship, how, how it works, uh, how, and uh, try to explain how it works with Kaos's people. And um, so, and I did this, this research, I did um, uh, back in around 2003, 2004 is when I really uh, undertook the research. Now the reason why I was, I was interested in it uh, was, there was a, a couple reasons. Firstly, um, uh, I was a, uh, I grew up in Winnipeg, and how I ended up, uh, our family ended up in Winnipeg was uh, it, uh, my grandfather, uh, Samson Pelche, after he came back from the war, apparently he was uh, the first from the community to, from Kaos' to, to enlist. There's about 50 people from Kaos' enlisted in the war, which is um, uh, um, almost all the adult males enlisted in, in Kaos's enlisted in the war. Uh, I did my master's research at, at, the, uh, at U of S in, in Native Studies, in which I looked at the, the role and impact of Aboriginal veterans in Saskatchewan. And so uh, and that allowed me to look at um, some, some veterans, talk to some veterans from Kaos's. And at any rate, after the war, uh, my grandfather was ended up there, and uh, the Indian agent didn't really like him a lot, so he kind of forced my grandfather to leave. And, or because my grandfather was in uh, Italy at the time, before, uh, just up before the war ended, and he got injured, and he was only supposed to live for another six months. And the Indian agent said, "Well, if you want your widow to get the the uh, veterans' benefits, you better uh, best you know sign off and and leave." So that's what we did. He he, he enfranchised. He, he ended up moving up to Laurent for a while. Him and, and my grandmother moved to Winnipeg, and that's where 
my mom eventually moved to after she left my dad in, uh, and, and moved to Winnipeg. So that's how we ended up in Winnipeg. So uh, grew up in Winnipeg. Most of my friends were native. We had native uh, kids, and we hung out, and we um, we um, you know it was just. We didn't really know when I was growing up, you know, the difference between Indian and Métis. That's, you know, everyone were everyone was were Indians. It didn't matter if you're. It wasn't until I was later. I was like, oh wait a second, that those guys, that family were there, were there Métis. Everyone, everyone just called each other Indians. We didn't really know know the difference. So, in 1985, my mom went uh, was uh, got her stats back and encouraged me to do so, and I did in '88, '89, something like that. And around 92, I decided to go back to university, uh, or go to university. I, I only had, at that time, you know, I had gone up to grade 10. It wasn't, school wasn't that big of a deal to me, so I just went up to grade 10 and, and you know, <coughs> I was in, more involved in other extracurricular activities, as it were, <laughs> so to speak. Anyway, so, um, what, what, around that time, around 92, 93, there was, uh, the band was going through a TLE claim. And so they sent out representatives from the band to talk to the urban members, in which there was a lot with cows, and they were spread all over the place, including where I was at the time, which was in Toronto. I was living in Toronto at the time, and they, they uh, representatives from the band came out, and there was about I don't know, about eight people showed up to the band this band meeting, and most of them had never been to to houses, and uh, so. The representatives talked about the TLA claim, and then they were really adamant that everyone there should visit the reserve. And, and uh, I thought, well, I mean, okay, sure. I mean, I guess these are kind of politician types, you know. They're, you know, but most people know that when Bill C-31 came into effect, people on the reserve hated C-31s. They're going to use up all the. They're not. They're not really authentic. They're going to move back to the reserve. They're going to pollute our culture with their white ways. They're going to use up all our resources. They're, everyone knows that reserve people didn't want to have anything to do with with uh, C thirty ones. So I was like, yeah, sure, whatever. So a couple of years later, I end up uh, taking a, a trip out to Saskatchewan. I'm thinking about. We were thinking about moving to Saskatoon, and while we were um, came out, we dropped by uh, houses. We met up with one of the representatives who was at that meeting, and they took us around the reserve and we kept on meeting up with people on reserve and saying people would remark, "Well, you know," uh, they would say, "Okay, who are you? Like, who's your family, right?" And uh, they would say, "Well, well, we really love our our, our, our band members or that are that are on the urban areas. They're doing so many great things." Or um, they'd all say, "You know, you should consider moving back." And I think, okay, there's quite a few people saying this, and these aren't just the, you know politician types, right? Who are people that have, and there's just people at the at the store, at the restaurant, at the golf course. There's like just regular people, not like. I thought, well, that's kind of interesting. And while I was doing, while I, I came to the U of S and I was doing my research, I was talking to uh, um, one of the veterans, who was my grandfather's cousin, first cousin, uh, late Edwin Pelche. So I was talking to him, and his daughter was there, and you know, the, his daughter was saying, um, you know, again, they wanted to know who I was, and I told them. <coughs> and I, rem I asked if they knew the, this, uh, my aunt who lived in Broadview. And I told her that her name, her name was uh, uh, Rose, Rose Adele uh, Pelche. And they said, uh, no, they don't know. I said, well, they, they, people know her as, as the bag lady. Oh, yeah, 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 I know, yeah, they, everyone knew her, right. <laughs> and, and, and they knew who, exactly who she I was referred to. And so that, that my aunt then was uh, 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 Edwin's daughter's uh, second cousin. So he, she then turns to, his, to her son and says, the next time you see her, shake her hand. Now my, my, my aunt was, as you can imagine, she was known as the bag lady. 
And there's a reason why she was known as Bagley, because she, she, had, she had some, uh, um, how do you say? Mental problems? Mental problems. <laughs> she had some mental problems. She, and, and she had been on the streets in Edmonton for many, many years. She, was, she had been alcoholic. She'd been, I mean, she was a Bagley because she, she wore a toque and, and a parka and, a bund and, and had a bundle buggy all year long, right? And so, uh, but that didn't matter. All that didn't matter. What mattered at, after that point was that she was a relative and that she needed to be acknowledged as a relative by her relatives, right? So you shake her hand and you, because she's your relative. So, even though I was there doing my research on veterans, I started to think, well, you know, this is pretty, pretty interesting because, you know, they're, they're not related to me like at C31, for one thing, right? And uh, uh, even though, you know, I grew up in Winnipeg with all a bunch of uh, Native people were, you know, friends and, and, you know, and I saw how people interact with each other. But in the same way that, they, that other First Nations were uh, portrayed as being in the newspapers and the media, right? Mm -hmm. You saw this a lot in the, in the late 80s and early 90s of people, you know, I remember seeing a, a CBC News or some kind of news story in which they were talking to reserve residents and they, they showed these uh, images of where the C-31s get out, right, you know, spray painted on someone's, some, someone's uh, houses. And so, and so, you know, so the real impression was from, from, from the late 80s onwards 